Welcome back to another episode of Bedtime Stories for Nate. Today we will be reading Poultry Geist by Mary Jane and Herm Och. Poultry Geist. Rudy and his best friend Ralph were two rowdy young roosters. They weren't loud on purpose, but there was so much to crow about. Each tried to be the first and loudest to crow at sunrise every morning. Then they had contests all day long to decide who was the strongest or the biggest or the loudest. Finally, at sundown, they wrestled each other for the highest rooster roost in the barn. Most of the other farm animals didn't mind the racket. They were rather noisy themselves and barely noticed Rudy and Ralph. The only one who complained were Sophie the pig and Glarissa the cow. I need peace and quiet to make milk, Glarissa mooed. But Glarissa, Rudy said, you give milk every day, no matter how loud we are. You are, you are keeping me awake every night, Sophie grunted. I need my beauty sleep. Can't argue with that one, Ralphie whispered to Rudy. It was two days before Halloween time. Time to make costumes for the Halloween poultry parade. This caused even more than the usual commotion. I'm losing my patience with this uproar, Glarissa bellowed. Me too, snorted Sophie, and the two of them went off in a huff. What old grumps, Ralph said. They can't remember what it's like to have fun. I bet they were never young at all. Rudy felt sorry about bothering Glarissa and Sophie. He tried to be quiet the whole next day, but when the animals gathered in the barn that night to finish their Halloween costumes, he caught up in the excite he got caught up in the excitement and added his voice to the squawking. Suddenly, a huge figure rose up in the far corner of the barn, its head almost touching the highest roost. Rudy had never seen a creature so tall. The monster let out a moan as it lurched forward. The animals tumbled out of the barn in a flurry of feathers. They ran until they reached the top of the hill. Glarissa and Sophie were the slowest runners and last to arrive, both out of breath. What was that thing, Rudy asked. It was the ghost, the poultry geist, Glarissa gasped. The legend says the poultry geist has been sleeping for a hundred years, whispered Sophie. I'm afraid you woke it up with your noise. Nobody dared go back into the barn. When the sun rose the next morning, Rudy and Ralph held each other's beaks closed to keep from crowing. It wasn't easy. Did you see that, Rudy asked when Ralph finally let go of his beak? The sun came up without us crowing into the sky. Don't tell anybody, Ralph said. We'll be out of a job. Everybody stayed out of the barn all day. They even held the Halloween poultry parade outside, which was fun because the costumes looked scarier in the dark. But as the night went on, it got colder and colder. One by one, the shivering animals slipped back inside, inside the haunted barn. Rudy and Ralph were the last ones left outside. My drumsticks have turned to popsicles, Rudy said his beak chattering. Let's go in. Inside the barn, the only sound was snoring. There was no sign of the poultry geist. Let's pick our roosts. Only two left. Ralph scanned the rafters, looking for the poultry geist. You take the highest roost. I'll use the low one next to the exit. I mean, the door. No, you should have the highest roof, Ralph. After all, you're taller than me. I am not, Ralph yelled. Look, you're slouching, Rudy shouted. Ralph drooped his feathers. You should have the top roof because you're much handsomer than me. No, I'm ugly, Rudy crowed. Look, 
Get up on that top roost, Ralph hollered. No, you get up there, Rudy screeched. The two roosters roared, rolled around the floor, feathers flying, when suddenly a shadow fell over them, a very tall shadow. Boo! howled the poultrygeist. There was a great flapping and squawking as the animals fled to safety. But Ralph and Rudy were trapped in a corner. Yikes, this is it, buddy, Ralph cried. We're going to that big roost in the sky. Don't give up, we can escape. Rudy grabbed his friend and tried to run around the poultry geist, but instead the roosters smacked right into it. And it didn't feel all clammy and ghost-like. Instead, it felt like feed sacks. Rudy cried. The poultry geist is nothing but a bunch of feed sacks all sewn together. Can't be. But Ralph gave a tug in the sacks and there stood Sophie and Clarissa. Boo! Clarissa mooed. Her eyes closed. Enough with the ghost talk, Sophie said. We've been unmasked. Awesome Halloween costume, Ralph said. You sure had us fooled. They weren't, f they weren't fooling, Rudy said. They wanted to scare us into being quiet. Bingo, Sof Sophie said. What gave you the first clue? I don't get it, Ralph said. I was trying hard to be quiet. Not hard enough, said Clarissa. Later, when the two roosters were alone, Ralph said, I wasn't really afraid of the poultry geist, you know. Are you kidding, Rudy squawked. You were so scared you almost choked on your gizzard. Ahem, said Sophie. There's more than one way to be qu to quiet a pair of rowdy roosters. So she sat on both of them, and the two rowdy roosters remembered the lesson for a long time. The end. And that concludes bedtime stories for Nate. Nate, I love you. I hope you have a great night and I will see you soon.